Oi, how are we gonna see those? ASL. What? It's basically ASL. Remember? Age sexual fusion. <laughs> I don't know what that means. What? What's that from? That was like early day, like MSN Messenger. Oh, ASL. I don't remember that. Age sexual fusion. What? Jeez. I don't know, man. Sounds made up. It's my hair. Oh, ready? Yep. I could have worn this in our last video, Jackie, because then we both would have been wearing our Mount A sweaters. Missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about four games and four gaming things. Exactly. We. Are... I gotta get back to my old ways. Yeah, that's just too much. Yeah, agreed. Okay, let's do it again. And welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about Four games. and Four games and things. exactly that feels better. Just feels right. We are back today with another episode of Board Games and Brew. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Coffee today. It's a coffee day. It's French vanilla coffee with hazelnut creamer. Because explains we're, why it's we're just so a little wild like nutty. that. You're a little nutty. We are here today to do a tabletop tag. The tabletop tag. And we were tagged to do this by Jenna Rose or from her new board game channel, The Board Game Garden. Or just Board Game Garden. I don't think the's in it. B G G. <gasps> <laughs> That's clever marketing, Jenna. Clever. <laughs> clever clever girl. girl. Clever gal. Clever gal. Basically, this is just a list of questions that we're going to answer. It's kind of like another little mini Q&A. We mm -hmm. just did one. If you want to watch what our big Q&A, you can go do that. But this is not that. This is different. Yep. This is a tag. So let's just dive into it, Jeffy. Are you ready? Yep. All right. Age, sex, location. <laughs> People my age, listen to me. Wait, wipe your nose. Why? It just crusties, like always. Jamie, I have a freaking cold. Yeah, Jeff's got a freaking cold. Permit me Guys, to have some boogie he's crusties. He's got a freaking cold. Leave him alone. So, people my age, you're going to get this. The first question is name, age, and location, which reminded me back in the day, early days, you know, ICQ days, uh -oh. early MSN days, it was mm -hmm. ASL, which is age, sex, location. And or, Jamie doesn't remember that. Well, and you I'm say like, oh. ASL and I think American Sign Language. Well, that's not what it is. It's ASL, A slash S slash L, well, age, sex, location. You didn't location. tell me about the slashes. We're not going to do age, sex, location. We're going to do something very right. similar, name, yes. age, location. Yep. All right. My name is Jamie. I'm Jeff. Very good. Uh, my age, we're the same age. So how old are you? 30, I just had a birthday. 34? Am I, I'm 34. So you're 34. You're not 34. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. No, oh, yes, I am. Are you? Yes. Oh, you are. I am 34, I like, but I turned 35 in like a month. In like a month, 35. Staying alive at 35. And location, we are in Nova Scotia, Canada. If you want to narrow it down further, Halifax area. Halifax. Ish. Yeah, ish. A little bit outside. But that's where we are. Second question. Favorite childhood board game? I know mm. what Jeff's is going to be. What? Cribbage. No. Oh. That was a bit later in life, I think. Okay. Like, I'm I'm thinking childhood, like, super young. When it was, like, Game of Sorry, Life, Hungry Hungry Hippos. Do you know what mine was, I think? Trouble. Boop, boop. Yeah. Getting into trouble. trouble it's fun getting good. into trouble. Boop, boop. Do you remember that um, game, everybody? Wait, let me talk about mine. Trouble. Of course I could. <laughs> so do you guys remember Trouble? It was like that board game with those little like plastic, like it was almost like pegs and you had to keep moving it. And there was a little like clear thing in the center and you pressed it and it would roll the dice and it goes boop, boop. And yeah, I don't remember what the game was about. You would go around and you had to get your little characters uh, into your little area. Section? Oh, okay. It's just like Sorry. Yeah, we had Sorry too. I loved Sorry. I think that's the one I'd pick. Sorry. Sorry, you would go around the board and then when you came back around, you'd go up into your little, uh, into your protected yeah. zone. But if someone knock, hit you, you would knock your character off and go out. It's a mean game. Out. It was very mean. Yeah. We I also Sorry. had the Game of Life, which game I of loved. Life was good, yeah. Battleships. Yep. Zach and I loved to play we Battleships. Didn't have, did you have Electronic? We didn't have Electronic. Yeah, of course we did. <laughs> Obviously, we had Monopoly. Yeah, I didn't have Hungry Hungry Hippos, but my friend Remember did. Remember Boggle? No. My buddy had Axes and Allies, too, which actually was probably my first intro to, like, bigger board games, but we never actually played the game. We just played with the yeah. little figures. Oh, Pokemon Masters? I had that I didn't have for that forever ago. No, yeah. we had we later refound it as adults. <coughs> Anyways, I feel like we over-answered that question. Yeah. Number three, when did you really get into the board game hobby? Uh, it was a cold winter and or a hot summer of 2016 when we were introduced to a little game called 
Game of Thrones, Thrones, the board game, second edition. Yep. And that was pretty much it. That was it. That was it. We haven't looked back since. We slowly kind of got into the hobby after that, and then it just kind of went pew! That, that sound specifically. Yeah. We went to the game store, we bought some games, we went pew! pew! When and they were like, oh, they in. They're they in. are all in. That's a universal word, Chow. phrase, sound. Is that the sound that Joe likes? No. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> That's for the snapshot. <laughs> yeah! I shouldn't have taken a sip. I'm like, oh, me. Okay. But yeah! Question four. First game you purchased, and do you still own that game? That's a tough one because... I think it's either Phase 10 or Apples to Apples. Do we do... Do we get into Phase 10? So this would have been before we got into like yeah. into the hobby. We did play some games, Phase 10, Apples to with Apples. My, with my sister. Adventure Time Monopoly. Yeah. Obviously, like... StarCraft we, Risk would have been around that time. Yeah, of the Office trivia game, like all of that stuff. I think it, if you were to assume it's a game that we bought and played a bunch... Yeah. It's got to be phase 10. Right. Yeah. Because we play that a ton with my sister. So that's probably it. And no, we it. don't own it. But what, it, the first game that we purchased after getting into the hobby was a Game of Thrones board yeah. game. And then it was probably Clank. Yep. After I think that. So. But yeah, we're, our like hobby is just a little bit scattered. Because yes. we did have that phase where we were playing phase 10. I really like phase 10. Yeah, me too. I feel like people don't people like it. crap on it, but I had a lot people of fun crap playing. on it. It's fun. It's a fun little game. Any hobbies other than board games? Uh, there's board gamey things. Does that count? Um, other hobbies, YouTube. <laughs> YouTube, I think, is my big other hobby, as in like editing and planning mm -hmm. and filming. And that is like the hobby that takes up the most of my time. Mm -hmm. And then other than that, I like to read. I like to listen to podcasts. I like to watch TV and movies. I like big butts. I cannot lie. Same. That's more of your hobby than mine. I like to miniature paint, which mm -hmm. is a recent hobby, actually. Sport. Big sports guy. Up until this year, I was still playing hockey. Hope to pick it back up just with the move and stuff. I basically had to abandon my team because we're selling our house and I didn't know if I could commit. I do like to read uh, as well. Video games are a cyclical hobby of mine. I'll go months and months and months without playing a, a video game. And then I'll dive back in for two or three months and play them heavy and then rinse repeat number six is your breakthrough game i don't know what that means like i would say the game that really propelled you into the hobby which is game of thrones, game of thrones. i think we answered that yeah i wonder like other than that like game of thrones i think introduced us just to that game though yeah i think it was after we played like munchkin quest clank and some of those games that we were really like oh yeah. this hobby is a lot bigger than we thought clank i think would be a good answer i would there. say clank yeah, yeah. Playing a deck building adventure. Yep. Seven, a theme that always draws you in. Cute animals in the forest with magic. <laughs> it's very specific. Yes. Space. Anything space theme is going to have my attention. Yeah, I'm a sucker for like, to I guess break it down. Anything that's like fantasy setting like Lord of the Rings mm -hmm. is going to draw me in. And any fantasy setting like Star Wars or anything like that yeah. is going to draw me yeah, in. Yeah, certain IPs for sure. Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, yeah. anything Disney. But, but to break that into like a theme I think is important, which would be like space battle, yeah. big space exploration stuff. A, a very well thought out fantasy horror oh horror is a huge one for me yeah and animals oh i wish that there was an animal horror game mm, that would be cool that would be very cool yeah but yeah if there's animals or if it's cute or if it's spooky you sold me on mm -hmm. it basically favorite mechanisms Oof. racing push mm. your luck drafting mine are uh campaign games mm -hmm. if you can consider that a mechanism which in my opinion i think you can I also love deck builders and uh, what else? I do like racing games as well. Well, just any like puzzle, puzzly games. Is that a mechanism? Like it's polyomino. Polyomino. Yeah. Tile placement. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely. I, we like everything though. It's really, really hard. I yeah. don't know. Is there a mechanism that we don't like? Uh, like we like engine builders. We like tableau builders. We like drafting, deck building. Yeah, I would say we're definitely in that realm Hidden of, movement. of Omni Gamer. I think real time is one that we struggle a little bit with, yeah. but we love Cuphead. That's true. Um, we're really into dexterity games now. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. There's not a lot that we're not interested in, to be completely honest yeah, with you. I don't really like beige games. But I'm very much mechanism. of the opinion that it's about who's around the table with you. Right. Less about the game. Yeah. So we actually just kind of answer the next one. A mechanism that you don't like or that you aren't good at. Oh, one that you're not good at. Push your luck probably. Push your luck for, you. for me. I don't uh, overly enjoy 
polyomino tile placements for me are a struggle. I love, I do love something like New York Zoo, mm -hmm. but I just fail a lot of the time to grasp that strategy. Yeah, I think for me, I'm not great at trick taking, mm -hmm. and I'm not great at those like super heavy strategy games. I like You're to good at vast though, which is I know. shocking. I, I don't know. I just like to do things quickly. And I find like sometimes when you have to plan out your whole strategy to like span an entire sure. game, yep. I'm not really great at that. I'm more like an in the moment type of gamer. Mm -hmm. That's fair. So that's why I like racing games so much. Mm. Newest games in your collection. Have you played newest game slash games in your collection? I have have it right you here. have you played it slash them? Jeff's gonna go get it. This is uh, brand new to us. Brand new to us. And it was just added to the collection. Yep, last weekend. This is Mechs versus Minions. No, it wasn't planned for this video. It's literally just sitting next to us. Yeah. This was gifted to us from our friends. Yeah. And we have not played it. It's one I've wanted to add to the collection for a very long time. Yeah, it's been and one they, of Jeff's grail games. They gifted it to us for Christmas, mm -hmm. but we were just able to go visit due to COVID and stuff. So we got, so it, we got now. it now. So we have not played it yet. I believe that's a campaign game. It is a cooperative campaign it's game. It's a cooperative campaign game. And, oh, that's interesting. That's one mechanism we didn't really mention, co-op. I think we're leaning more onto it now. As long as I'm with you. Oh. I mean that. You know what I yeah, mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. That was nice, though. So long as I'm with you, I can do co-op. X versus Minions, haven't played it yet. That is definitely one that we'll need our gaming table for. Mm -hmm. Looks like a bit of a beast. In a very good way. Yep. Favorite player count. This is totally dependent on the game. Yeah. But I mean, ultimately, we play primarily at two players. My ideal player, play, player, player, again, dependent on the game. Yeah. You know, like Deception Murder Hong Kong. I'd want to play that with as many people as possible. Yeah. But generally speaking, I think it's three. I really yeah, like playing at three player. I do too. Uh, again, Jamie and I play almost exclusively at two player, mm -hmm. but that has certain limitations. It does. That's a product of us just being able to play at that count. Yep. But in an ideal world, if we were able to play at three player consistently, I think that would be our answer. You know, just thinking about some of our favorite kinds of games, like racing games as an example, you can't, you can play them at two, mm -hmm. but you don't really want to play them at two. Like you can't play Camel Up at two, but like Cubitos and like all of these yeah. things, there's just a certain element of fun that gets added into it when you add more people into the mix. But yeah, I would say like there's a lot of games where three I think is ideal because then you're not playing for too long. It gives you a little bit more like strategy. A, like a game like Ark Nova. Yeah. If you play that at four, it's going to take a very long time. That's going to be too, too long. Yeah. What is your board game pet peeve? I feel like we did a whole video on this, didn't uh, we? Um, maybe, that, maybe we didn't. I don't remember. I really don't like, I don't like games that don't have a good box insert. Yeah. This is like... <laughs> this could be a whole video topic. This could which be a I whole think video we, topic. Yeah, I think we did do this. No play raids. No, my God. No play raids is definitely my biggest pet peeve. And people take way too long for their turns. Mm -hmm. And when people just take games way too seriously, if yes. we're not going to talk about games specifically, but if we're playing games with people that just take it way too seriously, it just saps the fun out. It really like, does. I think Jamie and I are very, I mean, I don't think we're egotistical in this state, this statement, but we're very fun to play games with. And I think the reason why we're so fun to play games with is we just focus on the fun. We don't care. Yes, we both want to win. We do care about winning, but like um, not to but a point. Not to a point that we're drawing out and pulling away from the experience of everyone yeah. around the table. Like we'll banter between the two of us which I think just adds to the experience because it's deflecting stuff off of other people where they don't have to worry. It's like, oh, Jeff and Jamie are going to go at it, you know, whatever. Yeah. I really don't like when the experience is ruined by someone that's just super uber focused on winning. Yeah. I don't think that's the point of games. And I think a lot of people focus on that too much. Yeah. And uh, it really hinders the experience of gaming with people, which I think is the primary focus of what we're trying to do. And how. What player color do you use most often? I just asked that. So listen... If you're getting stuck with one of these games that only gives you the basic colors, which is a one, it like blue, is one of my pet peeves. Like blue, red, green, yellow. Yeah. I'll always be blue and Jeff is pretty much always red. That's just because that's the color I give him. Yeah. I, I find it's easier if we have those four colors and there's two of us to have two opposite kinds of colors. I, uh, I don't care about player color. If there's black, I'll take black because I do like playing black, mm -hmm. but a lot of the time it's not an option. Yeah. So if there's no black, then I'll just, I'm usually the one that's last being like, well, give me whatever's left. Yeah, whatever's left. He doesn't care. I don't, uh, I don't really care. If there's purple, I want purple. If there's pink, I want pink. If there's a fun color, 
I want the fun color. Hmm. Otherwise, I take blue because yeah. blue is technically one of my favorite colors next to purple. So, mm -hmm. you know, read the rule book or watch a how to play video. Both. Yeah. I literally will read a rule book and then I'll watch a how to play or a playthrough. Depending on the game, if it's like a simple game, then I'll just read the rule book. But I just learned Arc Nova as an example. I read through the entire rule book and then I watched Monique and Naveen do a playthrough. Mm -hmm. I've been learning more recently than mm -hmm. I think I ever have before. Mm -hmm. But for me, a lot of the time, I actually have to set it up. I have to set it up. I have to see it. I have to walk through the, I have to read through the rule book and like manipulate things with my hands. Mm -hmm. But I also need to watch a video. Like it takes a lot for me to learn a game. Jeff generally learns by doing. Yeah. And I learn in pretty much every way. So I'll read, I'll watch, I'll just play, I'll do whatever. But I think we've gotten really good at just diving into a game. Yeah. I, I learn best if someone just says, here's the game. This is the general overlay. Let's play. And yeah. then I will ask questions as we're playing. But I've played enough games that most games now will just click. Yeah, which is another reason why player aids are so important. Yeah. Please, everybody, add them into your games. Favorite snack to eat while playing board games? Peanut M&Ms. I going to say that. <laughs> Jamie and Rodney just ate like a metric ton peanut of peanut M&Ms &Ms over the course of a weekend. M&Ms are the perfect gaming snack. I like M&Ms if I want chocolate. And to be fair, I'm not picky on the kind of M&M. I do love peanut M&Ms. I like peanut butter M&Ms. I like caramel M&Ms. I like regular M&Ms. I like almond M&Ms. I like all M&Ms. They're like my favorite snack. Then I would also say if I want something more candy-ish, Skittles, gummy bears. I like two things. I like to have sour candies. Yep. Um, I'm a big, I'm not a big candy guy, but I love sour candies. Mm -hmm. And I, I like to have chips around. I'm not yeah. I'm not a sweet guy necessarily. I'm definitely a salty. So like, very I love- salty. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> and we know, we know, eating while playing games, uh, we don't really care. No. <laughs> we, no. We're not picky about it. No. Like, obviously, I don't want someone to get their goop hands, but I think people are generally respectful enough to like- Yeah, if we're gaming here, hands. we're gaming with friends. And like, there's certain games that I would bring out that if we were playing, I would be like, hey, like- Make sure you don't get in your Cheeto dust on my cards. Yeah. But like, that's never been an issue. Mm -mm. Have you ever been to a board game convention? If so, which ones? We've been to two so far. Mm -hmm. We went to PAX Unplugged last December and yep. then Dice Tower West in April. Yep. March, April. Yeah, roughly. No, that's a lie. It was also <coughs> in... January or February, wasn't it? Yes, because it was during, yeah, February, whatever it was. So we've been to two. We are definitely going to PAX Unplugged again this year. That's yeah. probably the only other convention that will... Oh, we've been to Ga GaggleCon. GaggleCon. <laughs> Our little yeah. GaggleCon with Rodney. I think PAX Unplugged is probably the only other one we're going to this year. Next year, we're aiming to do Essen. Yes. If we can. I think PAX Unplugged is one we'll go to every year. Yeah, PAX is close enough to make it viable for us on a mm -hmm. yearly basis yeah plus billy and michelle live there so we also yeah, we, and and jazz is in is in philly yeah. there's lots of people there that we know it's also close for some of our other friends to get there mm -hmm. it just makes a lot of sense logistically for us to go to that one and we had a great time there and yeah. uh, i think it's a nice combination of everything everything publishers are there but it's not so focused on gaming like dice tower was we'll probably go to dice tower east in the future yeah we love orlando we love disney obviously so we'd probably incorporate that but mm -hmm. essence the plan for next year which would probably sap most of the budget we would set for a yeah. convention i would definitely do dice tower west again i don't mm -hmm. we didn't love vegas though so mm -hmm. that's the thing and it's quite far away from us yeah. so i don't know if that's one that we would do every year but every now and then i could see us yeah doing i think that. ultimately you know, to answer the question, like PAX is something we're going to go to every year. And then we'll probably be like, which one have we not gone to yet? We want to get to as many as we can because we just love seeing everyone. Oh, I mean, it's the best. sure, it's great to go and see publishers and get, you know, our brand out there and play some games with people. But really, we just, it's wanna just see our we friends. want to see our friends. And it's, you know, the the few opportunities we get in the year to, to go somewhere collectively and play games and hang out mm -hmm. and reconnect. An unreleased game that you're most looking forward to. Well, I have said Vanguard is coming <laughs> Did I nail it? See, you do that joke every time this question's asked to us. Still funny. I'm not picking ISS Vanguard okay. because now you've identified it. I've identified it so I can pick mm, something else. What do I want? Well, I'm waiting for Wonderland's War, but that's already on its way pretty and much. So it's already released. I'm really looking forward, for, uh, looking forward to ARCs. Can I slash this? ARCs and Ahoy. Ahoy! Um, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about Ahoy, but ARCs is a, a game coming out from Leader Games. Similar to Root, has some asymmetry. A bit of a campaign element. 
the one bugaboo for us is a three player game. I think we'll be fine. We're eventually moving closer to accessible gaming groups. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that's going to be a problem in the future for us. But I'm also interested in Ahoy, which again, I don't, I know almost nothing about, but another leader games coming out maybe in the fall or next year. I'm not hundred percent sure, but pirate themed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a sucker for pirate theme. That's a good answer to that earlier question. Oh, yeah. That I didn't mention. Big sucker for pirate theme. Mm -hmm. So both of those, I think uh, I'm going to loop them together. I would say for me, Maple Valley from Kids Table Board Gaming. I'm very excited for that one. The New Castles of Burgundy. I don't know if it's coming out this year. But I I'm... finally what? won a game of Castles of Burgundy. That's crazy. I've never. It wasn't okay. against me. I've never won a game of Castles of Burgundy. Just quickly here. Ever. Ever. And I've played that game a ton. I finally won one against Max. Suck it, Max. Suck it, Max. Was that your 3-0 and day? Yes. <laughs> I went 3-0 and on the day. I won Castle of Burgundy, Clans of Caledonia, and Innovation. Max, what are you doing? Letting them win like that. What is your favorite thing about the board game hobby? The people. Yeah. That's easy. That's like the easiest question to answer. It's the people that we've met, the relationships that we've built, mm -hmm. the discord, like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, and that's obviously very specific to us, but I would definitely say like Jeff and I were visiting, when we went to GaggleCon on our way home or on our way there, we were just sitting in the car and we're like, how crazy is it that we've been doing this for a year and we have met so many people who now I think are going to be people that are part of our lives forever mm -hmm. it's well, just I mean, crazy prime example i mean rodney and christy are our closest friends now yeah and and that wouldn't have happened if we didn't come to the space yep max Dool, and kyle all the people we met down in in kentucky and ohio yep uh Ilya and tyler Ilya and tyler out west like we're gonna Billy plan and we're gonna go visit them like jazz mm -hmm. michelle billy, billy. like mm -hmm. all the people we've met like and not only just that but even like being here and playing games here with jamie's family there's, there's instances and memories of things we've done that it wouldn't have mattered what game was even on the table. Yeah. Like we, we go on about, you know, games are important, but again, there's memories we've made that I'm like, what game were we even playing doesn't when matter. that happened? <laughs> it did, doesn't matter. We just, we have a collective shared experience that we've had and we mm -hmm. can recall and talk about. And it's like, what game was it again? Right. Oh, right. Cause, and again, like further proof, it doesn't matter what the game is. If the people around the table are having fun. That's all that matters. Yep. It really is. Yeah. And like even just thinking about how I'm like, God, when's the next time we can get to Kentucky? Like that's mm -hmm. all that's all I'm thinking about now. Like when's yeah. the next time that we can hang out with those guys? When's the next time that we get to see Billy and Michelle? And it is just like, I don't know. I feel like I've never had friendships like this before. No. For agreed. sure. I have really close friends here in Halifax. I love my friends here. But we share different hobbies. Uh, I've known those guys forever and they're my closest friends. It's different having people that is this close to you that also share in the hobbies you share in. Yeah. I spent so much of my life, I guess, kind of blocking this part of my life out, mm -hmm. you know, because I didn't have anyone. And then we both got into together and then we find all these people that share this passion. Yeah. It's, it's just been, we said recently that the last year, two years of our lives has been better than any other mm. portion of our life. Obviously there's been issues and stuff, but like overall life-changing experience to get into this hobby and yeah absolutely just adore the people here same z's open and punch a game right when you get it or wait until you play for the first time uh, immediately when you get it you don't even wait you just that's tough open though the because box. uh mechs and minions isn't punched that's a you thing that's there's multiple thing. games we have that's not punched <gasps> where uh i'd have to go through and look but like i don't think Knockdown is punched. I don't think Fleck of Faith is punched. Well, I got some work to do then. Ultimately, I, I like think to, do it, it right away. to answer the question, it depends on who's receiving the, the game. If it's me? If it's Jamie, she's probably right punching it right away. I tend to get stuff put away before it even gets punched. Like Root, Root Marauders isn't punched. Um, I don't even think... we. Yeah, it's not even out of the shrink. Crazy. Crazy also, girl. we're moving. So... Yeah, but that would lighten the load. You gotta, uh, you gotta punch things to make it lighter. Yeah, we I learned guess. that in our travels to Pax on Plus. That's true. <laughs> Lose that cardboard. Exactly. And then the very last question is others you would like to see do this tag. Now, I know we were tagged by Board Game Dave as well as Jenna. Mm -hmm. And I know other people have done this. I don't know who everybody's tagged, but obviously we'll just throw out Ilya and Tyler from mm -hmm. Cavre, of course. Billy and Michelle from Second Star to Left. Max and Doolin from Table Knots and whoever else wants to do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, hang on. Who? Game Garage. Game Garage. 
And if you do this, Jeff will watch the whole thing. I will. I promise, guys. I'll watch the whole thing. <laughs> except for the last five seconds. <laughs> and of course, anybody who wants to do it, you should yeah. just do it. Make sure that you tag Jenna. If you do this tag, because <clears throat> she's the one that kind of started this little train going, woo woo. I think that's everything that's for today. Yeah. That's all. That's it. And thank you, Jenna, for uh, tagging yeah. us. Really excited to see the growth of your channel. Mm -hmm. You're amazing. Really excited to run run into you at a convention. Oh my gosh! At some point in the yes. future. I literally um, can't wait. And and thank you for being part of our Discord community and you know sharing your joy with uh, with our community. Yeah, just wobble around. And Carlo and Dylan from All You Can Board. <laughs> Carlo and Dylan. <laughs> No, I was just thinking, yeah, Jenna's Canadian. And then as soon as I think Canada, I think Carlo and Dylan. Anyways, that is all that we have for you guys today. If you are interested in buying board games, you should first start by checking your friendly local gaming store. And for us here in Halifax, that is... What are you going to say? Board Room Game Cafe. <laughs> exactly. That's all we have. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see... Please subscribe. We hope to see you again soon. And now we say goodbye. Goodbye. Later days. The cord's hanging down now. Why I do this? What am I doing? I don't know. <laughs> what? I wish everyone could see this right now. This is the most ludicrous way to do that. And yet, it worked. Didn't it? Where's mm -hmm. your package? <laughs> He's scared of the dogs. He ran away. They're going to bark for a bit. <laughs> Jeez, he freaking bolted away. He must be very afraid of dogs. Okay, it's close. It's, you just said that. Yeah. I was going to say...